So the Trump tax cuts promised to spur more investment and higher wages and more jobs. Well, of course, here's another story pointing out how that's not true. Now, this time it involves uh, some of the largest banking institutions. Now, uh, some of these institutions, uh, according to uh, Bloomberg, uh, who reported on Wednesday that after reviewing financial results and commentary from the 23 banks the Federal Reserve designates as the most vital to the economy, it turns out that these banks took a lot of money uh, in, in tax savings but did not do what they had promised to do. Now, on average, the banks had seen their ineffective tax rates fall below 19% from the roughly 28% they paid in 2016. Yet the money mainly went to payouts to shareholders while the firm cut thousands of jobs and saw their lending growth slow. So understand, they got all this money in tax cuts or saved all this money, gave it to the top, their shareholders, cut jobs, and stop lending. Well, the whole point of banks is to lend out money. Well, if they're not doing that, then what are they, what are they there for? Well, they're there for profit because you have for-profit banks. Now, I wonder if this could be solved by maybe allowing the post office to operate as a bank. And that might actually be a really good idea. Uh, but more information here. Now, the 23 firms had boosted dividends and stock buybacks by 23% and eliminated almost 4,300 jobs and have signal plans to cut even more. Now, four of these uh, nation's six biggest banks, Bank of America, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, and Morgan Stanley paid less taxes than they projected in 2018. And while employees did get some bonuses and raises, they were marginal compared with the bank's windfalls. So understand, they gave out a couple of bonuses here and there, raised some wages, and that's good, but it's not nearly enough. They spent a majority of that money padding their own pockets. Now, meanwhile, the report detailed the biggest winners were the shareholders. Tax uh, savings contributed to a banner year for banks, with the six largest surpassing $120 billion in combined profits for the first time. Uh, in fact, the dividends and stock buybacks for the 23 lenders surged by an additional $28 billion from 2017, even more than their tax savings. So we've seen this before. The Trump tax cuts have led to over a trillion dollars total in stock buybacks. Whereas we have most people, their incomes are basically stagnant. Their uh, incomes are stagnant. There's not a lot of uh, an increase of benefits and there's no actual hiring boom. Yes, unemployment is, oh, it's very low. At the same time, this is basically a continuation of the economic conditions as before, as it's been shown that even though Taxes have been decreased massively on corporations. They have not spent that money on creating jobs. And what they have done is that they have funneled that mostly to themselves, stock buybacks, which of course, unfortunately, inflate the uh, stock market. And uh, again, uh, executive compensation. So this is a complete failure uh, in what these tax cuts were supposed to do. And so there's been outrage now, uh, thanks to this report. Uh, I want to give you uh, a response here from the group Patriotic Millionaires, who said, quote, This is the GOP tax cut in action, screwing over working families and handing out tax breaks to large banks and corporations. He's absolutely, uh, they're absolutely right about that. Uh, because, look, and we've warned people about this. We've warned people that, hey, the tax cuts, they're not for you and me. They are for the wealthiest Americans. I am in favor of middle-class tax cuts, actual middle-class tax cuts. Now, they said, um, corporations said, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Republicans, they said the corporations, oh, don't worry, we're going to close the loopholes. So they'll pay, uh, though, well, they're not going to pay any less. What we're going to do is we're going to lower the rate, we're going to close the loopholes, and we'll actually get more money out of the deal. 
But right now, they didn't close any loopholes. The ones that they did close are for the middle class. That's why there are so many people out there now that are saying, our taxes went up. We are middle class families, and now we are paying more into the system. That's the truth of the Trump tax cuts. Now, one more quote here from Democratic Representative Katie Porter. Uh, now, she said, simply, quote, outrageous. Well, understand that. Uh, and then finally, nonprofit Better Markets says it's time for an economy that pr prioritizes Main Street Americans, not Wall Street's biggest banks. And that is the direction that we absolutely need to go in. Uh, we need to stop giving so much money in tax cuts to these giant banks, to already rich corporations. What we need to do is we need to actually institute a fair tax system on the wealthy. 70% over uh, or any dollar over $10 million. That is a fair tax system. Um, that is a fair tax rate. And also, I would be uh, really interested in seeing Elizabeth Warren's proposal to do a small 2% wealth tax uh, on people making over a billion dollars. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.